everyone, I'm Nikki Brenlin. I'm the writer-director of As High as the Sky, and we wanted to thank you for watching our film and also checking out these extras. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how As High as the Sky came to be and my process of developing the script. The film itself came to be because Caroline Fogarty, who plays Margaret, she and I have known each other for a long time. I think we met around 1999 or 2000 doing a short film together when I was an actor. And then throughout the years I had directed her in some theater and we really wanted to work together again. So I thought, well, why don't I write you the leading role in a feature film and we can shoot in your house. And so it kind of was this quid pro quo project. I also really wanted to work with Bonnie McNeil. She and I have been friends for a very long time and I just think she's fantastic as you saw. So I had the two actors and the house and needed to create something from that. It was a bit of a different writing process for me because I normally start, I think like most writers with a theme or the main ideas that I want to explore and then bring it down to the particulars. Part of the reason why OCD came into play is that I felt like the house itself, you know, lent itself to someone who, who could have OCD. It's very minimalist, it's very clean, and I also struggle with OCD. Um, not of the cleaning variety, as uh, my poor past roommates will attest to, but I do more of a tapping counting thing. Um, and so that was an issue I wanted to explore. And I also had worked in a group home for several years where the kids were encouraged to really express all their emotions, revisit traumatic events, really talk about their past and hopefully work through them. So I was interested in looking at somebody who had had their world just rocked at four years old and it was never discussed and she's not encouraged to talk about her emotions and kind of just see how that would come into play and how that would work with her OCD. For me, the hardest part of developing Margaret was that the audience doesn't see her before Matthew left. Um, so when I was writing the script, I sent a draft to my parents, and you know, there's a line where Margaret says, "You know, I don't know why Matthew left," and my dad's like, "Well, I know why he left," <laughs> you know, and I said, "No, she wasn't always." you know, in this state. She wasn't always this particular. So I made the decision to open it, open the film with her holding the pillow um, and then pushing it away and then those emotions just kick in and she has to straighten it and that would start, that's what starts her on the series of compulsions. Um, because the idea is that Margaret really doesn't understand her emotions. She can't identify grief and she can't identify loneliness. She just equates it with there must be something out of place. I always tried to, when she's confronted confronted with something emotional to then have her, we really see her react to it. An example would be she comes in to the guest room and she finds the pictures of Hannah and Josephine, which I think subconsciously kind of remind her of her lost childhood and she sees kind of what she didn't have and this closeness that they have. Because she's unable to really process this, she thinks it's, the room must be messy. Because Margaret's arc is really subtle, um, we kind of needed to touch on it lightly and, and show her growth um, in small moments. For me, I think part of why she begins to heal is that she starts to learn about her parents. She sees Josephine um, expressing sadness and grief over their loss. I think in particular it starts um, in the office scene. I think that's a really beautiful moment that Caroline conveyed because here's the first time that she's heard anything about her parents and she thought her mom was just a brunette and that's all she knew. And I really loved how Caroline took in what, what um, Bonnie and Josephine was telling her. And then of course it's too much for her to handle and she feels like something's off and so she starts rearranging the folders. I wanted to place these moments throughout and obviously here comes a 10 year old who's more in touch with her emotions. We've got the scene of Hannah really teaching Margaret that you know, it's, it's okay that you're not over Matthew right now. And when we had the culmination scene with Margaret, when she finds the paperwork, the brochures where Josephine, you know, went for pain, pain management, I really wanted to hold Caroline aback a bit from really breaking down because I think at that moment, oh, uh, Margaret's in such shock of finding this that it, that it begins to regress her back into her habits and she oh, just can't, she's forced to confront it, but she just really, isn't quite able at that moment until we get into the car and the cleaning no longer 
um, settles her, it actually just now unleashes all of the grief of her parents and of Matthew and um, of what she's now discovered to be Josephine. I thought Caroline just did an incredible job. That was actually the last thing that we shot for every single shot was her sobbing in the back. So yeah, that was kind of how Margaret um, came to be. So the character of Josephine is very, very loosely based on my half-sister, Andrea. She is eight and a half years older than me. My sister spent time on communes. She is very nomadic and she just has that very loving, giving spirit that Josephine has. Um, so she influenced the character a lot. And I think the Josephine character, I mean, I think Bonnie was just incredible. There was so much to grapple with. Here's a woman who's dealing with her impending death, having a daughter that she needs desperately to find, you know, a new family for. She wants it to be her sister, but they've been estranged. All the while, she has to kind of keep this very upbeat demeanor going for both Margaret and her daughter, who needs her to just be that, that strong and fun still. One of the things that I really loved about um, Bonnie's performance is as Josephine is that she really just conveys so much without speaking. I mean, here she really has the most dialogue. <laughs> She's just, you know, trying to keep things going the whole throughout the whole movie. But we really, I really wanted these moments of seeing what's registering for her. And I think it, you see that initially the first living room scene when she sees Margaret kind of move the glass a bit, and then also with the shoe mop scene. When she comes home from San Diego, I just held in one shot, one long shot on her. I didn't feel the need to push in or anything because Bonnie, everything just filled the frame for me. She really takes in the relief of seeing that Hannah and Margaret have bonded, but also the grief of knowing that she's not going to see her daughter grow up and that her daughter's going to be raised by somebody else. And I just, I just thought that was a magical, magical moment um, in the film. Come on, I'm one step ahead. Sorry? I thought you were my mom. And so with Hannah, we're, again, just extremely fortunate to find Laurel. I mean, she was 11 when she shot the film, and I was just completely in awe of the range <laughs> that and depth that she already had at that age. Here's this little girl who's carrying around the secret that her mom is dying while con being confronted with the woman that is potentially going to be her mother figure um, and all the while still wanting to have these happy memories with her mom, uh, with Josephine. And I think, you know, Laurel was just completely amazing um, conveying all those things at the same time. What's so great about her is that even when she's being really disrespectful, she's just so endearing. I think we still really feel like um, we want to know what's going on with her. I loved what uh, Laurel was able to convey just in her face when she finds the boxes. That to me is where um, Hannah's arc of accepting Margaret, or at least beginning to warm up to her, really comes into play. And you know, it's such a short period of time, and Laurel just showed so much just in those small, small moments. Um, so I just thought that was really beautiful. So the crying scene on the curb breaks me every time I see this movie. Um, Laurel was shooting, we had traffic happening, we were starting and stopping and uh, you know, we kept, we kept making all these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We did the scene numerous, numerous times, um, both in a wide and a close up and because I really wanted the, this long two shot, we had to run it from the beginning to the end, you know, every time we shot and Laurel had that intensity and again the depth in every single take that we had and I just thought she she was completely, completely amazing. So thank you for watching this developing of the script and again for watching the film.